All right, well, welcome back, everybody, on a very breezy and slightly chilly uh, day here. We're going to do day number two on building a storm shelter. My goal today is, if you can hear me through all this wind, uh, to get this built all the way up until I put the roof timbers on. And uh, I may even include this video of me sheathing the outside. We'll see how much footage I get today. But it's going to go over many episodes building this storm shelter. So yesterday I got out here and made a really good start. I got all my baseboards down, my pressure treated baseboards. Um, got several runs made up. I have even more time to work today. That's why I feel pretty optimistic that I can get all the way up to the roof section. And holy moly, what y'all just sent me bring out. I've still got more timbers inside. You just would not believe the sheer amount of wood that goes into a storm shelter to make it as strong as it is. Thank the good Lord for a tractor or I'd have a lot of chiropractic visits right now. That. That lumber weighs a lot. You just don't realize until you pick it up and watch the whole front of your tractor you know, squish down and your tires come out. So this structure is going to be extremely robust, very heavy by the time I'm done with it. It should stay here for a long time to come. Let's get to work. All right, I'll probably go over some of the basics I went over in the last video because there's always new people that stumble across your videos, it seems like. So long story short, uh, we got hit by a tornado earlier this year, tore a building down. I salvaged a lot of the lumber out of that building to build a storm shelter. We're in Florida, it's a hurricane state. We also get uh, you know, a bunch of tornadoes every spring, uh, although they're very weak. That's why I don't mind building this structure at all. It's rated higher than anything we'll ever have. So like I said, salvaged a lot of the lumber. That's why it's mix, uh, mismatched. Found this design online. I'll have it down in the description if you want to see the actual engineered plans that I'm building off of. And uh, man, have you priced concrete or steel storm shelters? Thousands, like eight, nine, ten thousand dollars on up. So that's the reason I have chose to build me one, especially since I already had so much lumber available. So not only am I nailing and screwing, but I'm also gluing these timbers together. I'll have a playlist at the end of the video if you want to watch how I got to this point. But uh, I'm going to kind of show you where we're at today. Basically, we're building Lincoln logs, tying everything together, crisscrossing it, making a very strong, thick structure. Now, once you make a run all the way around, take these long, heavy-duty 8-inch screws and lock every corner together. Then you'll come back overlapping. So every time it's overlapped and uh, it ties together so strong. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
I have decided, even though I have a lot more of these timbers made, I wish I had really thought this through. Their design is extremely tall. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking in here right now. This is already well above my head, and I still have to put another top cap on, which I'm about to do. So they've designed this thing eight foot tall, and I just I didn't even realize that that's completely unnecessary for a storm shelter. And I would think the shorter you keep it, the stronger it'll be and uh, less wind resistance. So I hate to scrap all this lumber that I put together, although this is the old lumber from the blown down building right here. That's all for the top over there. But uh, I think I'm going to stop. I've got enough lumber to go up another two to three runs higher, but I just, I don't see the need in it. Like I said, I wish I'd have did the math and thought about this ahead of time and saved some of these two by sixes. So this is another deviation from the plan that I'm going to do. Um, I just, I just don't see eight foot of headroom necessary. We're not building the Taj Mahal, we're building the storm shelter. All right, so one thing I've got to do to make my top cap is obviously I can't have these lips sticking out because I'm not going to put another run on top of this. So I've got to cut this lip out of there. I could have ripped it uh, you know, before I build it, or I can just run down either side with a skill saw, which is what I'm going to do, and cut this off flush. That way I can come in on top with the roof uh, and not have these old inch and a half lips in the way. So I'm going to rip this real quick. I've got to do three of them along with two small pieces, and uh, this will be the final cap. We'll start putting the roof on. I'll give you all a quick peek of the inside and not much to show here other than it's a wooden box <laughs> a heavy duty wooden box so now you can see how the roof's gonna interlock and go across and i'll be running those eight inch screws all from the outside boards into these top boards really just locking everything together so um plenty of room it's pretty much seven by seven here 49 square feet our plan is to put a little futon in the back since this is a hurricane state. Chances are we could be out here all night long, you know, sleeping through multiple hurricanes. That's the whole reason I'm going to put a window unit in the back. And I'm going to reinforce that very well because, uh, you know, you're messing with the structure when you do that. However, there's a huge door here and it's still rated to extremely high wind loads. Now, we still got a lot of framing and some structural stuff to do with the door, but I'm going to do all that with a tiny little probably 12 by 14 cut up out there for a small windy unit so i don't foresee it really messing with the structural integrity of this well y'all i am at yet another knocking off point it took me a lot longer to get this point than i thought i had to wind up trimming some boards down plus uh it just takes a while lifting these heavy timbers by yourself getting up to this height i'm starting to feel it so I'm ready for some rest and a fresh day to finish the roof out. So next episode, we're now doing the roof. So I want to go ahead and get the first one and keep everything squared up overnight and show you what I'm doing. So now we'll start putting these uh, timbers in this way, interlocking them and gluing them just like we did the walls, carry them all the way across. Then we're going to come back with four by eight sheets of plywood, lay it over, 
we'll trim it all flush with the top and we'll actually nail it into the top beams we'll nail it into each beam all the way down it's going to wind up getting a pile of nails in it inside and out that is what's truly going to lock every single timber together the structure uh, you name it then eventually we'll get around to where we're going to anchor it down to the concrete so i will let you know once i get this sheathed and i'm going to uh do some flashing on top something to kind of protect it from the weather i'm probably going to take a break for a little bit from this because it's the holiday season we have a lot to get together it's coming up next week and uh i still need to order some metal for some doorway bracing and ac window bracing that i'm going to do and i'm still not 100 percent convinced on how i'm going to brace it i've got a couple ideas in mind so i want to think that through instead of just rushing and getting a metal order in so we got metal work coming up a lot more woodwork uh all kinds of stuff with you know concrete anchors a lot more stuff coming oh yeah hardy board siding painting so this is going to rock on for a few weeks just giving y'all a, a heads up without the holidays it's going to kind of stop me you know for a week or so just with all the running around we got to do so hopefully you enjoyed this like i said next episode will be me kind of wrapping this up and making it somewhat weatherproof so i feel comfortable if it makes it through a few rains uh, that nothing's going to get inside you know we'll caulk every corner and seam and kind of get it boarded up for a little bit then we'll cut the doorway back open to start doing metal work and uh, keep blasting on with it here coming up in a couple more episodes. So thank y'all so much for watching and uh, we'll catch you on the next episode.